Hello friends, I hope you are doing well. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate everything you need to know about GIMP if you are a new user. Although I have published more than 30 tutorials on GIMP separately, however, I thought this is the time to make a complete guide on GIMP for beginners. So let's get into it. If you don't know, GIMP is an open source image manipulation and editing software that is an excellent alternative to Adobe Photoshop. Please visit GIMP.org to download this software. You might consider watching our separate video on how to download and install GIMP. Right, so as soon as we open the application, we get an interface like this. Uh, however, uh, we can customize it according to our preference by going to GIMP menu here and then preference. So here you have different options which you can customize, uh, but I would recommend to keep it as it is if you are a new user you can customize all this when you are more familiar with the system right first we need to know how to open an image in GIMP to do that we go to file menu here and then open and then hit open you might get this dialog box um, just hit on keep right so we got an image here now if you need more image to open as layers like multiple layers we similarly go to file menu here and then open as layers open right so we got uh, another image so now we are going to learn uh, the simple techniques of um, editing an image using GIMP right here we have um, our first image um, and then we have second image let's take the second one in the top Right, so first I'm going to um, rescale this image. To do that, we can we can go to Tools here and from there Transform and then you, you have the option of Scale. You also can press Command S to rescale an image. You also can go to Tool here, click on this and then we need to click on the image. Now we can put our desired dimension here or we can use these handles right so that's how you can rescale an image uh, you can make it smaller or bigger as you want and when you're happy hit ok now we're going to learn the use of other available tools here so here we have move tool so by using this tool we can move the image anywhere we want you have to click and hold and then you can move it anywhere you want and then you can use the keyboard option to take it forward backward anywhere you want and then we have the alignment tool for an example if you need to align this particular um, layer uh, to the exactly to the top or in the middle or in the left or in the right uh, we don't need to use the move tool we just can make it simply by using alignment tool so to do that we we select the alignment tool and then we go to the bottom layer here in the um, tool options uh, if you select the alignment tool you'll see that it is relative to image by default however you can change it to selection uh, if you if you make a selection here I'm going to uh, tell about it later but by default it's going to relative to the image that's why we select the bottom layer and then if you click on align left edge of target the image is going to move to the left and then if you want to put it in the center here and then if you if you want to align it in the middle that's how it is Right, so that's how we can use alignment tool. You can spend time to understand this all. We also can distribute, that's another thing. Uh, you can watch our separate video on this as well. So now we have different selection tool available here. Uh, rectangle select tool, ellipse select tool, uh, free select tool. And then we have um, your select tool, uh, foreground. And then we have fuzzy select tool. We also have um, select by color tool. So these all are selection tools and uh, all of them have different purposes. Um, so just to show you, I'm going to um, 
use a rectangle select tool so let's say we just want to uh, manipulate this area of this image so we have selected it we also can use other tools if we want to get even more accurate result i'm just quickly showing you how you can do it right so we have got the selection now if you want to do anything here an example if you want to desaturate this area if you want to make it black and white we go to colors menu and from there desaturate and then desaturate as you can see this part has been desaturated right similarly if we want to desaturate the other area of this image other than the other than the selected area we go to select menu and then invert so what it's going to do is that it's going to select the rest of the area other than this area so now similarly if we go to colors menu from there desaturate and if we desaturate we see that entered area is uh, now black and white uh, i mean desaturated and this area is um, as it is so that's how we selectively can manipulate an image now we deselect everything similarly if we select uh, just this part of the image and let's say I want to move this a particular image in the middle of this selection what do you do we go to the alignment tool we change its relative to selection and then and then we align it to center target and then we bring it to the middle right so now we are going to explore the other tools as i have already mentioned these are all selection tools uh, you can explore our uh, separate videos on these um, tools so now um, next we have the crop tool and um, we often need to crop the images um, to exclude the unwanted part of the image so to use this tool we select the crop tool and then we have tool options here we can also set a fixed setting here i mean we can put our desired dimension here and then uh, whenever we want to crop it's going to uh, crop proportionally and you can obviously use it uh, depending on your requirement um, and you also can uh, see the position and size here and you can increase or decrease the highlight opacity as well so to crop the image just select the area and when we are happy press enter as you can see uh, the image has been cropped right and then we have um, different other tools from here to here all of these are different transform tools and I'm going to show you how all this work quickly so this is a unifield transform tool we can transform an image in an unified way like this whatever the way you want it right and then we have rooted tool and you can rotate the image by moving this line when you are happy just hit on rotate right and then we have the uh, scale tool which we already have used but I can show it to you once again here we can simply make it even smaller or bigger and whenever we are happy hit on scale um, if you want to uh, know more about how to rescale and upscale an image without losing quality we have separate video also on this and you can check it out now we know how to use uh, scale tool and then we have cheer tool we can cheer um, the magnitude x and y any way we want when you're happy click on cheer next we have flip tool uh, we can flip the image of course uh, by using this uh, just click when you select the tool just click on the image and it will be flipping and then we have um, perspective tool actually this tool is quite useful we also have separate video on this you can check it out for an example if you want to place this image on a frame or um, anywhere um, let's say 
we want it like this just here and hit transform that's how it works and then we have the 3d transform tool um, so that is going to allow you to transform an image even more dynamic way you can literally move it in any way you want Like I said, it's going to give you even more uh, flexibility and work smoothly to transform an image. So similarly, uh, when you are happy with the settings, you just click transform. Right, and then we have uh, another transform uh, tool uh, and that is handle transform. When you're happy similarly hit transform and then we can use the wrap transform tool and that can selectively wrap the area as you can see as i'm moving the circle things are wrapping yeah so that's how we can use the wrap transform tool so similarly we have cage transform tool here uh, you can use it as well, as well to make a transform of an image so now we have bucket fill tool here so the use of this tool is uh, to fill selected area with a color or pattern um, as soon as you click on this tool you have tool options here uh, so here you can adjust the opacity of the color uh, at the same time you can fill by foreground uh, color fill or uh, background color fill so here we normally get the foreground color and it is the background color and you always can change it according to your preference by going if you click here you will get a color palette here and from here you can change any color you want uh, this is now foreground you can change the background to black and you always can make it black and white by clicking on those little icons so now if you want to um, uh, get color on top of this image entire image we just simply click here and as you can see we got white uh, color on top of this image however if you want to get color on any selected area we use the selection tool and select an area and then we fill it with any color we want right none we don't need to select it anymore so now we have another tool which is gradient tool so this tool has different users of course especially for designing um, so we similarly select the uh, tool and then we get different options here uh, we can increase or decrease the opacity according to our preference and then we have different gradients um, here we can choose um, and that is going to be created based on the foreground color and background color right and then we can choose different uh, gradients available here foreground to background foreground to background H uh, as B or you have different options so you can choose according to preference and then you also can change shape of the gradient um, so let's go with linear for now and then we can drag a line like this we also can alter the line we can So that's how we can use gradient tool right and then we have brush tool um, we can use brush tool for different purposes but um, normally as you know we can paint using brush tool uh, we can adjust when you select the brush tools uh, we get 
options here we can adjust the size aspect ratio angle spacing hardness and force according to your preference uh, you can always spend time to understand this um, you, you also can adjust the opacity and we can choose a hard or softer brush whatever we want and then we can paint and you can change the color foreground color here um, similarly by you just simply need to click on it and then you get a color palette and you select any color you like um, and then you can paint and then we have pencil tool uh, this tool uh, can be used to draw line and other things as well um, and then uh, we have airbrush And then we have ink tool that can be used also to draw lines and then uh, we have my paint brush tool you can use all these tools to paint um, different things and also this brush will be useful uh, when you will use layer mask and uh, we also have separate video on layer mask um, and you can check it out and then we have erase tool if you want to erase any part of the image we can use this um, for example if we want to erase this area we just scrape this tool and paint it over we can adjust the hardness and force And then we have clone tool so this is quite useful actually by using this tool we actually can clone the pixel from one part to another uh, you similarly can it's a brush actually um, you can adjust the force and hardness and size of the brush um, so here for an example if I want to clone the pixel from here to here because here we see there is a different pixel um, so to do that we uh, grab the brush when we are happy with the settings we just take the circle um, from where we want to take the pixel and press command and click the area from where we want to take the pixel and then we just take this circle um, and let's say here we want to paint it as you can see as we are moving this circle it's copying the pixel from the other area that's how we can clone the pixel from one place to another this is quite handy and similarly we can use this perspective clone tool we can um, it, 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 it has similar use uh, we just can uh, modify the perspective and for example if you want to take pixel just from here And then we have healing tool similarly we press command to take pixels from here and then when we brush here it's going to blend from here with the pixel available pixels here so when we do it you see it's not only copying the pixels from there as clone tool does it's actually blending the pixel with the available pixels here and then we have the smart tool uh, to use this tool we just click and then we click anywhere we want to use uh, the color as foreground color let's say here yeah and then we can brush So that's how you can use this one and then we have blur and sharpen tool by pressing command key and hold it you can blur the image so you can see it's getting blur and to sharpen just keep brushing on top of 
the image as you can see this area is getting sharper so that's how you can uh, sharpen and uh, blur uh, an image by using the blur and sharpen tool and then we have dodge and burn tool and you can actually selectively lighten or darken using this brush but we can hide this layer now right so to dodge the area we just click and as you can see it's getting dodged and if you want to um, burn we press command and then we brush right so that's how you can burn and dodge by using this tool and then we have pots tool so this tool could be used for various purposes we also have a separate video on this you can check it out so one of the main use of this tool is to uh, select the area more accurately so when you select this tool you can actually draw lines more accurately and you can adjust them as you want and just press command and click on the other circle to join them and so now we have pots we can always zoom uh, by changing the persons here and then like I said you have more flexibility to use the line and and get a better selection so that's how you actually can get a better result by selecting the area using um, pots tool when you're done with drawing and then you can go to select from there select from pot so that you get a selection and you can use uh, it for different purposes of course like I said we have different video on this you can check it out right um, here one thing you need to know is that you can always hide the um, layers by clicking on the um, eye icon here if it's visible that means the layer is active if it is not that means it's hided so yeah we can hide and make it visible according to our preferences anyway so the next um, tool we have here is text tool so we can add text on the image by using this tool um, as you can see here you have uh, option to choose the available font you also can install um, new fonts in GIMP if you want uh, we have separate video on this as well you can check it out if you need to install new font and you can choose any font you want from here and then you can adjust the size color um, and you can uh, justify them center middle left right um, you also can adjust the um, uh, line spacing and letter spacing uh, here so let's write something here and then we can change the color according to a preference and then we can take it anywhere we want using the move tool as I already have mentioned we can use this tool to move anything and then we can place it anywhere we want and then if you want to increase or decrease the letter spacing we can do that here we also can increase the line spacing uh, increase or decrease the line spacing if you want um, right so the next tool we have here is um, color picker tool uh, here we can uh, pick color from anywhere we want let's say we need to get this color or this
and then we have a measurement tool here um, we can use this tool um, for various purposes to measure the distance as you can see uh, we have the information here the pixels and the position we also can use this tool to straighten the image this image is straight enough but uh, just to show you I'm going to um, show you the technique let's say we draw a line like this and then if you want to straight straighten the image we click here you see it has been cropped um, so like I said this image is straight but you, we end up getting some images are not straight enough so we can use this tool to straighten them up right and then we have the option of zoom tool here um, by using this tool we can zoom out and zoom in the image uh, let's see if, if you want to zoom in we click on zoom in and then we press it's zooming um, in and if you want to zoom out we press here uh, and then we click here and then we click on the image it's going to zoom out right we also can change the percentage here uh, if you want the reason I explained all these tools here because most of the available tools are here however if you don't see all the tools here and if you need other tools you may find them under the tools menu here you can check it out if you miss anything here uh, now I'm going to explain the menus here um, so first we have file menu here so from here I already have explained how to open an image but um, later I'm going to show you how to create a new image and also how to save and export but for now I'm going to move on to the uh, next menu and that is edit menu so here we can uh, do a few things uh, we can undo our uh, activities here uh, by pressing command T and also we can use the menu we can go to the menu and then we can undo our activities here and then we can see um, we can also undo our history all the history let's do it here we have all the history of our editing and then we can cut um, the areas uh, selected areas or if even if you want to cut the image we can and then we go to edit menu and then cut as you can see the image has been disappeared and then uh, we can copy the image and then paste it as a um, new layer or we can paste it as new image which is going to open another window here right and then we can paste the image into the selection you will understand this better as you get more used to with this software and then for an example uh, if we select this area and we, if you want to clear this area uh, we go to edit menu and then we just click clear sorry our bottom layer was active so that's why we didn't see this um, as you can see um, this area has been cleared uh, one thing I would like to mention here so you see this part is now transparent to get this area transparent uh, we go to the layer and then we click on this uh, layer and here we'll have option of alpha add alpha channel with this layer we have al alpha channel added however if you want to remove it you can remove it in that case you will have background like um, since the background color is black you get background color here but if you need transparent uh, background then you add alpha channel by going to the layer and click on it and then from there you select um, alpha, add alpha channel right so now um, if we want to um, fill this area or the entire image we, we we can fill with foreground color we can fill with background color we also can add pattern here if you want and then if you want to uh, stroke the selection we can do it as well um, so to do that we go to the edit menu and then stroke selection here you have to select um, stroke line and solid color you also can go with pattern and then you can adjust the stroke line according to your preference and then stroke you see we got a stroke here right 
and then we can um, go to select menu here we can here we can um, uh, select the entire layer by going to select and then all you also can do it by pressing command and a you also can deselect everything by going to select and then none and then we have select by color actually that is going to take you to select by color tool and then we can select from pot and if, if you remember that we drawn a pot by using pot tool and then we connect them by pressing command and clicking to the ball and then um, by going to select uh, menu or we can select it from pot you also can use command and B to select as you can see it has been selected and then uh, we can go to uh, feather sharpen ring grow border um, and all this uh, but for now I'm not going into the details of everything here because we don't need all this at this moment if you are a beginner um, so yeah now I'm going to deselect everything and then we have view menu here you can keep it as it is um, uh, if you are a beginner uh, but uh, you basically can spend time uh, by going to the menu and see uh, the available options here so here we have like the option of zoom in and out uh, we also can zoom proportionally uh, we can flip rotate uh, you also can do it by using the tools available tools here it's going to take you to, to the tool anyway um, we can shrink the we can use shrink uh, rip um, we can navigate the windows uh, we can show the selection here we can hide it we can show the guides uh, we can hide the guides um, we can snap canvas edge snap to active pot these are the things that you need to know in the next level uh, but for now i guess this is fine keep it as it is um, and then we have uh, the image menu here here we have different options like um, if you want to duplicate an image we can go do it by going to image menu and then duplicate similarly you can do it uh, by pressing command and d and then we have option of changing the mode to RGB to grayscale in indexed but I would recommend you to keep it um, as it is RGB and then we can change the precision uh, from 8 bit to 16 13 whatever we need um, if you don't if you're not familiar with this you don't need to be worried at this moment and then we can um, check the color management options here and then we can transform the image here uh, we also can do do this by using the transform available transform tools here we can we can adjust the canvas size here and then um, we can check the print size that is important um, you can you can check the resolution because uh, printing resolution and um, digital resolution um, is not the same so you might have to change change it here we also have separate video on this you can check it out and then um, we have other other options here you can activate guide here uh, for your work how you can do it you go to guide and then you have option to create new guide by percentage you also can just get a new guide and you also can remove the old guide how you can get a new guide you see it's now um, says horizontal uh, when position 50 percent you got a guide here and if you want to if you want to get another guide but vertically we select vertical and then if you want to remove the guides you just click remove so that's how you use the image menu here and then we have layers so here we can create new layer by pressing by going to layer menu and then new layer you also can command and control and then n um, to create a new layer you can duplicate the layer here like you see it has been duplicated you can transform you can check the layer boundaries here you can scale the layer uh, you can crop the content here right and then we have most importantly we have the colors menu here here we can actually um, uh, work on the image uh, we can we can check the color balance to temperature to hue comma saturation exposure we can work on shadows highlight we can increase and decrease the brightness and contrast um, so yeah this is very useful uh, for image editing this this menu um, so for an example if you want to change the color balance here we go to the color menu and then check the color balance here uh, we can 
adjust the color um, selectively like you know if you want to work on shadow then select shadow mid if you want to work on mid tone select mid tone or highlights um, and then we can uh, adjust like uh, as you know here um, the opposite of scion is red and the opposite of magenta is green uh, opposite of yellow is blue so if you take it this way that means we are increasing scion uh, and if we take it this way that means we are increasing uh, red that's how we do it here as well so we check it and then um, if you need to increase the color temperature of an image you go to color temperature and then you can adjust them according to your preference um, you can um, increase or decrease the original temperature here according to your preference and then you can decrease or increase um, your intended temperature here and then um, we have hue and chroma here we can increase the hue value um, or we can increase the chroma we can increase the light as well of the image and then we have um, hue saturation we can work on hue lightness and saturation selectively for example if you want to increase the value of yellow we select yellow and then we increase the saturation value or light we can decrease we can increase the light uh, hue and we also can increase and decrease the hue according to our preference and if we need to increase um, the light hue and saturation overall just uh, don't need to select anything just increase it and you also can adjust the opacity if you want and then hit ok when you're happy you also can check the result by splitting the view uh, you have to tick it here and then you have this line you can move it and see the changes so that's quite good right when you're happy hit ok I'm resetting it anyway and then we have um, saturation here we can increase the saturation uh, value according to preference we also can adjust the opacity similarly we can split the view to see the changes hit ok when you are happy right and then we have exposure menu here uh, here we can increase the exposure uh, we also can increase or decrease the black level according to preference and then we have shadows and highlights here we can preserve and restore sh shadows and then we have brightness and contrast here we can increase the overall brightness of an image and then we also can increase the contrast and then we have levels here uh, that is quite useful uh, when we get an underexposed uh, picture we can work on this we have separate video as well on this topic we can increase the light We can adjust the output and input levels here um, according to preference uh, and then we have curve here we can like if you want to increase the light or decrease you can bring it down bring it up so that's how you can use color curve um, you spend time here and we also have separate video on this please check it out if you want um, I'm just giving you a, giving you a quick tour uh, just to give you an idea and then we have um, we can invert the color we can invert linear invert these are a bit advanced things so I'm not going into this in detail however there is one thing which is quite useful for the beginners uh, for an example um, it's difficult to identify and understand the white balance uh, if you were a complete beginner uh, with image processing um, so in that case I guess using the auto uh, option here uh, is quite useful um, so if you want to adjust white, bal uh, white balance by using this tool it is it can bring good result 
for you so to do that you, you go to color menu and then auto and then white balance so far we haven't noticed much change here because this image white balance is quite okay you also can use auto color enhance without going into too much if you are if you find it complicated so at the beginning you can enhance the color of an image by going to color menu and then go to auto and then color enhance well it may look a bit different now because we have already edited and then we can desaturate the image by going to colors menu and then desaturate and then desaturate so it's very simple straightforward for the beginners that could uh, be very useful however you have advanced options there you can check it out later and then um, we have other options here I'm not going into the into this this moment but there's one thing I can show you and that is colorize so for an example if I want to colorize this image I can do it uh, by going to colorize uh, option and then I can change the color according to my preference sometimes we need this for uh, making some graphic effect um, on the image and then we have the tools menu here um, so under this menu we can explore all the available tools um, we have with GIMP then we have uh, the um, filters uh, here we can um, use some of the fil filters for um, further enhancing the image uh, or modifying the image for example if we want to blur the image we can do it selectively we also can um, blur the entire image and we have different options here for example if you want to focus blur we click on this and we can we can change the shape we can adjust the blur radius We can adjust the opacity so that's how we can use the blur option available blur options here you have few options we can enhance uh, we have different options here we can uh, use high price high pass which actually it's quite uh, useful we have also separate video on this we can use noise reduction option here uh, if you have noise in the image you can use this we can reduce uh, the noise um, or increase if you want and then uh, if you go back to the enhance again uh, we have um, the option of sharpening the image uh, click on sharpen here you can increase the radius decrease as you can see it's been changing and then we have other options here like you can um, you have artistic options like if you want to make it cartoon we also can make it like photography you also can use all these um, filters to uh, create further effect um, and manipulate the image uh, I would say these are for a bit advanced user uh, you can however you can spend time to learn it's all about spending time and uh, practicing and then that's how you get familiar with all these options here all right and then we have um, windows and help menu here you can show and hide the dog tabs and tab position as well um, so these are very simple i'm sure you would understand it and then if you if you need any help and if you want to know more about any tool or anything you can search it here so right now I'm going to show you how to create simple design using uh, GIMP and that will also help you to understand better about uh, the uses of different tools um, to do that we go to file menu here and then new here we can import our desired dimension uh, for an example if you want to create a um, YouTube thumbnail uh, we insert 1280 the width and and 720 height and so now we got black color here we can change it of course we change um, the color here foreground color white you also can select any any other color if you want like i said before um, and then we create the bucket fill tool 
we increase the opacity 100% and we click sorry we have to change the foreground color because fill type is selected as uh, sorry background color right so we have got white um, color here you can change it to any any other color if you want um, or we can use gradient of course um, to create a design now uh, if we want to add gradient here we can we can do it surely um, we can change the gradient type and then of course we can add and change we can also change the shape like if you want to get it in the middle we can do it right and then if we want to add any text we can do it to do that we select the text tool we write something for beginners right and then if you want to change the size let's um, let's make the uh, upper line smaller and I think this one is fine uh, we also can change the color according to preference and yeah, and then we can position it in the center wherever we want by using the alignment tool we really we make it related to image because we want to position it in the image and then we can take it to the center and then we can add drop shadow to our text to do that we go to filters menu from the uh, light and shadow from their drop shadow here we can adjust the um, horizontal shadow offset and vertical shadow offset as well according to our preference we can increase the blur radius we can also increase the radius glow we can increase the opacity we also can change the color if you want but I'm going to keep it um, black anyway and then hit OK when you're happy and then if you want to add any logo here let's say if you want to add a GIMP logo here uh, we just go to the file location and from there we simply drag we also can open it by going to file menu but this is another way that you can do it right and then we take it to the top we can rescale it by using scale tool and let's make it 250 right so now we can position this uh, logo to the center so to do that we um, use the alignment tool um, and then we go to the bottom layer select it and then we position it to the center and we take it to the top right and then we can change the color of this logo if we want uh, to do that we go to colors menu and from there colorize and then we can change the color let's say white and then um, I'm going to add drop shadow in the logo to do that we go to filters menu from there light and shadow and then drop shadow here we can obviously adjust this according to our preference And then hit OK when you're happy. R right, so now we can add further information in the bottom. Um, so to do that, I'm going to add extra color here. So first we select the area by using the select tool. And then um, 
we can use bucket fill tool um, and then we can obviously use our preferred color here by changing the background color and then and then we just click here and we get the new color here right so now I'm going to add um, the living image logo here and some text so I'm going to bring the logo and then we resize it again using rescale tool and then I'm going to take it to the top and then we're going to use scale tool to rescale this image let's make it 100 and then we position it here we also can position it to the center of the selection we can select the area and then we go to the bottom layer and then we go to the alignment tool and then we can change it to uh, image to selection we click here and then we can make it to the center right now we deselect everything and then we add some text we can change the size and we also can change the font and then we can increase the letter spacing right we can position it accordingly so friends this is how you can create simple design using uh, GIMP right so at this point I'm going to show you how to um, save and export uh, the project so to do that we go to the file menu and from there if you want to save the project we can just click on save or we can go to save as here we can name the file okay. yeah and then hit save and then if we want to um, export it we can go to export or export as and then we can name the file here um, now by default it is PNG we, but we can make it uh, JPEG or PDF whatever we want uh, we can see different file extension options here uh, we also can just type the file name here yeah for an example if you want to make it PDF here it is or we simply can write PDF we click export and then export file has been exported so friends, this is how you can um, save and export the project. You also can check the print settings here by going to print option here. You can check all the details. If you have any suggestions about this tutorial and if you have any feedback, please do share. And um, please let me know if you want me to cover more tutorials on GIMP. I hope this tutorial will help you and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.